Yeah. One of the things we do a lot at Dakota Lakes is look at uh, crop rotations. We've done this in relatively small uh, plots where they're big enough to harvest and, and plant with conventional equipment, but relatively small compared to fields. But we've also done, and probably the thing we have more of than anybody else is long-term uh, crop rotations have been in place for up to 30 years right now. So a lot of the rotations we will look at today will be uh, 30 years old and some of them will be 25 years old. Uh, this particular rotation here we have a, a one that's been changed uh, five years ago or six years ago because it was initially an alternate year, what do we call an alternate year rotation. Um, it went from corn to peas to winter wheat and then soybean. So it was every other year broadleaf. Uh, half of the crops in the rotation were low in carbon. Uh, there were reasons we did this, but it's very destructive to the soils. And we have quite a bit of data that show um, wheat growing in this rotation compared to wheat in the rotation across the path here will be uh, yield half what it does over there in challenging years. And it's simply because the soil has become less productive. Uh, <clears throat> our solution to that was to add a perennial sequence and that's what our ancestors used to do is they would, they would farm for a while and then uh, put it back in perennial or in the tropics they let it grow back to, to jungle. And I was in Ghana a few years ago, and that's the way they ran their farming systems and let it regain its fertility, so to speak. So here we're going to look at the soil. Uh, we use switchgrass as our perennial sequence. This is the last year of the switchgrass, and it'll go back into an annual sequence again. The crop we took out was, was the soybean. Uh, so we now have two-thirds of our crop for high residue, plus we do switchgrass as a perennial sequence and it's high in residue and has a very deep rooting system. So it brings the nutrients back up from below. If I take these spaces between the switchgrass, it has some of the remnant that gave us problems in terms of soils. It has a real platy structure. Uh, that top will just plate off, it's smooth like that, the water doesn't really go into that well. Water has to have holes to go in. It's starting to develop some macropores, but you notice right here how that whole soil just divides in a horizontal plate. And they used to call that a plow pan, but it happens uh, just because there isn't enough organic matter to hold it uh, into, into a better form. And there's another plate that came off just the same way. Now <clears throat> what we started with here when we came to the prairies and Lewis and Clark actually walked across our farm just south of here along the river in 1804. Lewis did, Clark didn't. Um, <clears throat> by putting the switchgrass in we, we develop a totally different type of soil structure. I'm trying to find a victim here. Now one of the things that you may or may not be able to hear is the roots tearing. Now you see a totally different change and these roots will go six to seven or eight feet deep and so they will bring lime and gypsum and other nutrients that are trying to escape out the bottom it'll bring them back to the surface and deposit them on the surface this this part of the field we've made uh, grass seed on for the last uh, number of years. The west part of the field we've grazed. So we cycle that nutrient. Most of that nutrient remains here and cycles back into the system. So we've captured it, 
come and brought it up, released it. And then we'll go, starting next year, we'll go to 15 years of an annual cropping and then we'll put it back into perennial again. So that's one of our rotations. It's now a wheat, corn, pea type rotation with five years of perennial, 15 years of annual, and then a five year perennial. If you calculate that out 75% of the time in 20 years, it's high residue rotation or high residue crops. And that's, <clears throat> that's what we feel we need to have in this country here to maintain soil structure is at least 75 and preferably 80% high residue crop. Mm -hmm.